standpoint, a contract is any agreement that the law will enforce whether in writing, verbal or implied assumed from the conduct of the parties. Contracts range from the very simple, for example, buying a drink at a resort complex to the very complex which is building a cruise ship. The law of contract it is principally concerned with promises that constitute part of an agreed exchange. It is very important to remember that when a holiday maker books a package holiday through a travel agent, the contract is between the customer and the tour operator, with the travel agent merely acting as an intermediary. It is also against the tour operator that the customer must seek legal redress in the event of a breach of contract. Although the travel agent may be, li may be liable for any extras that are not part of the brochure holiday, such as currency, exchange, uh, airport, airport car parking or travel insurance. In hospitality industry, a contract is an agreement or promise made between two or more parties that the courts will enforce. In other words, it is a set of rules governing the relationship, content and validity of an agreement between two or more persons. Normally, it is related to the sale of goods, provision or services or exchange of interest or ownership. A valid contract can be considered as the moment that the offer is accepted. For example, you have been agreed to purchase with someone's old cupboard 450 ringgit. So that is mean you have a valid contract. Once you pay to them that they give once you pay to them and they give you the cupboard, which means the contract is complete. So in general, a valid contract may be established either in writing or verbally. That is mean it can be a verbal form of contract and it is also can be a written form of contract. A verbal contract is any contract which is expressed in words by spoken, while the written contract, it is a contract general, generally refers to a written document outlining with an agreement. More often than not, it is usually a good idea to have a written contract if a transaction that is worth more than a limit. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Siti Aisha binti Kamal Zaman. I'm a trick number 269464. Today, I would like to present about the fact of the case, uh, Stanshaw V. Ramada Lansing and Corporate Center 2018. Uh, Mr. Robert Stanshaw, the plaintiff, filed a report that he felt was trying to get into the hot tub at the Ramada Hotel in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, because the support bar leading into the hot tub uh, broke. Uh, five uh, corporate names have uh, been brought into this lawsuit action. However, when the defender filed a move for summary judgment, claiming that uh, none of the identified defendant were valid party, uh, a defendant who own or operate the Ramada Hotel in Lansing, Michigan, known as a uh, legal claim uh, for negligence and premise liability. The trial court decided to approve a uh, defendant petition and diminish all named defendants, but instead of diminish the complaint, it gives plaintiff 30 days to admit in, to specify the right uh, defendant. Thus, on appeal, plaintiffs claim that the trial judge errant in concluding that uh, the, pa uh, the party has failed to reach a binding statement and diminish the case. That's all for me. Uh, thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Nur Farhana binti Abdullah with the metric number 270290 and I am going to proceed with the presentation with the issues of the case. 
This case of Robert Stencil has occurred at Ramada Hotel in Lansing, Michigan. It happened in 2018. Robert Stencil, the plaintiff, claims that he fell into a hot tub in the hotel. He fell due to the support by leading into the hot pool broke according to his complaint. Plaintiff has been brought this lawsuit against five corporate dependents. The lawsuits of this case consist of alleging negligence and premises responsibility. By that, the defendants also filed a motion for summary judgment. The trial court agreed to grant the defendant's motion by dismissing all the named defendants. But in place of dismissing the complaint, the courts give the plaintiff 30 days to amend the complaint to name the proper defendant. That's all from me. I would like to pass to the next presenter. I hereby to continue with the holding of the case. The defendants propose an order under the seven days rules, but the plaintiff thereafter filed an objection towards the defendants' proposed order and a notice of hearings. But for reason unclear from the record, a hearing was not held. Before that problem was resolved, the defendant and plaintiff agreed to settle the case. However, when the plaintiff delayed in signing and returning the submitted settlement document, the defendants filed a motion to enforce the purpose settlement or dismiss the case with the, in accordance with the court's prior ruling. The, the, the plaintiff thereafter returned the document to the defendants but unilaterally crossed out language in a medical addendum. The trial court thereafter determined that the disagreement over the medical language showed that the parties did not reach a binding agreement. Accordingly, the court refused to enforce the perfect agreement. Instead, observing the plaintiff had, no, had taken no actions towards identifying and naming the proper defendants, the court dismissed the case according with the, its earlier ruling. Court ruling to dismiss the case that was prior to the plaintiff disability to compel with the court's order. The first ruling by trial court was to dismiss the case did not meet the settlement agreement. Defendant name for the case was ruled out as according to the defendant they are not directly involved with the Ramana Hotel management. Thus, they should not be held responsible for the claim. Due to Due to appeal made by plaintiff, court had given plaintiff chance of 30 days to renew the defendant's name for the claim. During the period, defendant had agreed for settlement and made a 7-day agreement, but plaintiff failed to return the signed agreement on the due date. Plaintiff, plaintiff also had crossed out a clause in agreement without prior discussion with defendant attorney with which null the agreement. Plaintiff also did not take any action of presenting new defendant as per required by the court as such allow the court to rule out holding to dismiss the case. So in conclusion, the case of Stencil versus US Land Global was dismissed by the court. The dismissal ruling was due to the fact that the case was failed to meet the final settlement agreement between the both parties. Plaintiff may have the rights to file a claim towards the hotel management for negligence as he had made misfortune due to the malfunction of the hotel appliances. However, due to the plaintiff, 
uh, fail of presenting a proper defendant that actually responsible for the claim, the case was deemed to be dismissed. So, from the case, we can see that the contract law between the premise and the customer not only cover for the customer's right, but it is also help the premise to avoid any mischarge by the customers. The court had determined the final ruling after careful steps of hearing and a thorough observation of the evidence. So, the plaintiff and the defendant both were given chances to defend themselves and present their arguments to the court. And the final ruling were decided fairly without any bias judgment. Thank you.